Hi people, Daniel from Devon Sons Guitars here and today for C we're looking at cavity insulation. Now today's going to be a bit of a science experiment looking at cavity insulation, different types of it and how they work. Don't forget the C here comes from a well-known guitar brand and at the end of this series I'm going to give a breakdown of all the different letters from the series and which brands they come from. So place your bets, see how many you get right and wait for that video. Now before we get into looking at the nitty gritty of cavity insulation, I should say that even in this A to Z series, there are kind of some smaller series of videos and I'm gonna make some about different pickups and wiring, which all maybe link into this cavity insulation. So if you're interested in this element of it, do like, subscribe and hit that bell to see those videos when they come up. Now let's get on with the insulation. So here we are over on my workbench, ready for the cavity insulation test. Now what I've done is I've got a very basic guitar body. Um, it's a strat shape. I've got strat pick guard with the standard three pickups put in. There's the volume tones pickup selector. And what I've done is I've modified this one. So there's also a jack on the front here, which it would normally be the output jack here, just to make it easier for me to wire and rewire this as we try out the different insulations. Now, as you can see on the back at the moment, there's no insulation at all on the pit guard and there's no insulation at all on the cavities. So this is set up without insulation so we can hear how it goes. So what I'm going to do is one test like this with no insulation inside at all. Then I'm going to do one test where I used foil, aluminium foil on the inside. I'll explain how that works when we get to that stage of the test. And one stage where I'm using conductive graphite paint, this one from Cat Music. And again, I'll explain how that works when I get to that test. That's three different tests, no insulation, two different types of insulation. And then at the end, I'm gonna just see what difference it makes if I also insulate the pickups. When we're doing the insulation at the moment, we're just gonna insulate the cavity and the back of the scratch plate where the cavity is. So, it's, so the controls here are totally covered in insulation. And of course, what I need for any good experiment as well is a cup of tea. Now, as with any science experiment, we want to be rigorous, but it's a bit hard for what I'm doing. So essentially, I'm gonna try and screw everything back in as close as possible to how it is at the moment. Everything here is going through the lead from the output into my cool pitch black tuner, which I'm really only using for the mute button on and off. Then it goes into my Roland Cube amp, and on top of that, I've got my trusty old Zoom H2 recorder set up. And the setup on this is so that it's just using the rear microphone, the one that's facing towards the speaker. I'm gonna keep that in a constant position the whole time. The volumes on the Roland constant all the time, the volumes on the pickups, etc., will be the same. Let me just unmute the Zoom and show you what it sounds like at the moment. So right now I'm recording both through my lavier mic, which is on my shirt, so you can hear me, and the Zoom mic, just so I can show you the sound that we've got at the moment. You can, we go into the actual feedback and the hum in a moment when we do be more vigorous, but at the moment I'm just going to show you that in the front position on my switch I've got just the neck pickup, and I can tell because I'm tapping it with something metal and it's not picking up any signal. As I go through each one, You can see the different setups until in the last position it's just the bridge. So I will test all three as we go through. Um, let me just switch off the zoom to explain how the experiment works. Right, so there's no actual setup to do for this. We've got it in place. Let's go back to the zoom. I'm going to record the sound so we can hear it just through the zoom and not through my mic on my lapel. Maybe a bit crackly on my control there. Now I've muted the output, I can take this out and let's put the foil insulation in. So the foil insulation is a tape. Um, it doesn't really matter how neatly you put it in, as long as all the bits of tape overlap with each other. Because what will happen is the tape, because it's aluminium, will make contact with itself. 
sealing the connection. You can get loads of different types of tape. Copper and aluminium are probably the most common. I prefer the aluminium because my experience of using both is it's just easier to apply. Maybe it'd be worth doing a future test to see which is better out of copper or aluminium. And what I'm doing here is I'm trying to cover the entire cavity with the tape. I won't make you watch it all, I'll speed it up. I tend to work in small pieces which are easy to position down. Then overlap them. As I said for this one, I'm just doing the cavity where the controls are and not the pickup as well. We'll come back to testing the pickups later on. So once I've done the cavity, I want to do the back of the pit guard as well. And for this, I need to remove the controls. Let's just cut some tape while we're here. Now, what's really important here is when this turns over, it's got to make contact with the cavity on the inside. So it's one uniform connected together piece of insulation. And the way I do that is I just make sure there's a few overlaps from the inside that touch the top simply by taking a piece like this and overlapping it. So now anything that's touching the, this part of the metal will be touching the inside because it'll be a complete circuit. And I'll do the same on this side here where the switch overlaps. And because the pots are actually metal themselves, when they go in here, they're making contact with this piece of insulation and complete so they become part of the circuit themselves. I'm going to be taking a look at pots later on in this series of eight, the A to Z of guitar by looking at volume pots. The differences in audio and linear and also the resistances of them. Great, so here we are set up. Let me just plug in the control, make sure everything's up to maximum. I'm on the neck pickup. I'm gonna go over and unmute my um, Call pitch black, start recording on the zoom. Later on in the video, we compare the sounds, but let's just see now if we notice a difference. This time I'm going to change over to using the insulation paint instead. I'm now just gonna give this a quick clean with my special MEFS hydrochloric acid mix. Any of you that have watched my videos on priming and painting a guitar body will know about this mix. I use it all the time on different parts of guitar making. So let me just show you the graphite that I'm gonna be using. It's conductive graphite paint from Cat Music. Loads of different companies sell them. I guess each one will have a different ratio of graphite to paint. This one is an acrylic paint. It says acrylic binder on here. It's essentially acrylic paint mixed with graphite powder, which is conductive. So when you paint it round, you get that conductive layer all the way round the areas you paint. I'm gonna do as exactly as I did with the foil. I'm gonna paint an area around here and I'm going to paint inside the cavities. And I'm just literally gonna paint it on with a brush. So I'll speed this bit up for you. And again, I'm just going to be doing the cavity where the controls are. Now I'm painting this onto bare wood, but you could spray your body 
whatever colour you want, whatever finish you want, and then paint this on top. I mean, a scientific test would be to do multiple tests on it, on the bare wood and on the wood that's been painted first. What you'll probably find is on bare wood like this, it soaks in to the wood more. Whereas if I was painting on top of a, a coat of paint or a paint that had been varnished or some sort of sealer, it would sit on top of that paint. So maybe that would make a difference to how well it works. Normally on my guitars, the wood isn't bare when I'm painting it on. I'm painting it on after the body's been sprayed and I don't normally block in the cavities when I'm spraying the body. So it would be full of spray paint. And as before, I want to make contact between the cavity and the pickup cover. So I will put some bits just over the edge so the graphite will link round little tabs. maybe a border around this bit. And because it's acrylic paint, I can just wash my brush in water. Now what I'm gonna do is leave this to dry. It's acrylic, so it dries quite quick. And then I'll come back to it for the test in a few moments. Oh, that's disappointing. Yeah, so my tea's gone cold in the period that I've left it to dry. Also, this dried first, so I put all the controls back into the pit guard. The cavity's now dry. So let's put it back together and do the test. So I've got the volume and tones in the same position as before. Everything's the same as before. It's as controlled as I'm going to get on this simple scientific experiment. Let's switch off the mute on the Korg and press record on the zoom to see what this sounds like. So I think clearly having insulation makes a difference and the carbon paint was far superior to the foil. But just in case you couldn't pick that up from the clips that were separated, I'm now going to show one clip where I'll flick between each pickup position and for each pickup position, I'll go first no insulation, then foil, then carbon. So you can tell the difference. Great, for the next stage of the experiment, I'm going to just leave the insulation as it is in the cavity for the controls. So that's with the conductive graphite paint. But I'm gonna try and insulate each of the different pickups and see what difference that makes. So I will insulate one with um, foil, one with nothing, and one with the carbon paint here. Great, so now that's dry, let's put it in place. And when we do the test, we've got the cavity insulated all with conductive graphite paint, as is the bridge pickup. The middle pickup has no insulation on it, and the neck pickup has the aluminium foil. So plug in, volumes and tones up as always. Let's switch on the Korg and the zoom. Well, if anything, I think this is conclusive proof that there's no point insulating the cavity unless you insulate the pickups as well. And also, it's conclusive proof that the conductive paint does an amazing job. Now, of course, it might be that the conductive paint is doing an amazing job because this section here is linked 
to the cavity space where the controls are. And maybe if this was all foil and it was linked up as well, it would have the same. And this bit isn't connected at all. So what I'm gonna do now is just run a bit of foil from here to here and see if making a connection round improves the foil situation. So we're back again, conductive paint on the bridge, which goes into the cavity, they're connected together, there's hardly any hum at all. If we switch to just the middle pickup, well now there's hardly any hum there, and that's not even fully insulated, it's just got a bit of the foil linking it round. Yeah, and if we go to the front here, we see that it, it also hasn't got the hum. So my conclusion from this is, yes, cavity insulation is essential, but it has to be in the control cavities and in the pickups. My second conclusion here is, the conductive paint seems to be really good, but even when we just got a thin strip of foil going between the two, the foil seems to work really well here. So maybe if I'd done the whole thing in foil, as opposed to like the whole thing in, um, conductive paint, I would have had the same effect. I'm not sure there's a massive difference between the conductive paint and the foil. But what we did find is when we just put the conductive paint in the cavity, it was better than the foil. So overall, going forward, I think I'm just gonna use the conductive graphite paint. Great, well thanks for watching. You'll notice over these videos I'm wearing a range of different shirts, like this mediocre guitarist one. Definitely sums me up. There's also a mediocre bassist one, which probably sums me up as well. Anyway, if you like them, I sell them direct from my website. Go check it out, devilandsons.guitars. They're on, in the shop under the merch section. And on the back of all of them, there's a little symbol that says Devil and Sons Guitars, so you know it's real quality. Anyway, until next time, happy strumming. <laughs>